banishes. May I have a word? Helen, something wrong? Apologies for disturbing your rest. I'm afraid it can't wait. What did you think of the captain? I saw an officer alone. A proud man turned to stone, perhaps by years of war. I saw a broken man. I did not see the tyrant you described. Inaction is tyranny. He will not act, but nor will he get the hell out of the way. I do not disagree, but the captain needs help. I too was a soldier, broken and haunted. With Antea's help, I recovered. Pennington may need the same. Leave Pennington to me. The good folk of the fort need your help. You are banishers. The dead, you'll have noticed, hammer at the gates. I would like you to go into the mines and find out what enrages them so. I would like you to do what the captain will not. And while we deal with the hordes of angry spectres, what shall you be doing? When the mines are purged, I'll oust Pennington. How goes it with Sebastian? I'm not sure. I had never let go of my grief. I was bereft, empty. His absence gave me substance. I clung to it, useless really. My husband died in the dark with nothing but my handkerchief to soothe his last moments. And now he's back. If each worthwhile thing in life is to be lived, and then when it is gone, to be grieved, then what now? I have to believe our love is enough. Love is all. Grief can hang. <laughs> and yet I cannot hold him. I cannot feel his warmth. He is there, but he is not there. That hurts. All things are fleeting. Gaze upon the ghost you love and you can't deny it. Bitter though the thought may be. Yes, tis a blessing and a curse. Yet against all reason, we persist. Let us make the most of time remaining. Is it your belief that Pennington's quarantine lies at the heart of the problem here? That this is why the dead rage so? What else? He walled them in. Miners, nurses, soldiers, the healthy or the sick, he buried them all. And then he lied about it. I'll brook his callous cowardice no more. Much goes on around here and... You seem to know about all of it. I try, and I could do something about it if the captain was out of the way. What brought you to New Eden? I came with Sebastian, willingly, mind you. My father was a soldier. I knew there'd be travel. Sebastian courted me for three years. I swore when we married I'd follow him to the end of the earth. And here we are. How's morale about the fort? The fort has known better days. Not many, mind. It's always been miserable. Folk deserve better. They fought so hard and lost so much. The captain must show them a future. Where do we go? There is a second tunnel into the mines. The entryway was walled shut during the quarantine. Getting there will not be easy, but the barricade should fall without too much difficulty. After that, who knows? Underground again. Wonderful. If it soothes you, I too am taking a significant risk. The captain has a penchant for locking people up and leaving them to rot. Some years ago in New Eden Town, the captain locked up an innocent woman. A fate I wish to avoid. 
Pennington the Jailer. Do you speak of Deborah? What did he do? I was away from New Eden Town at the time. Rumours said she was a witch, I later heard. And so too did the captain. The court agreed. Who knows what urges drove the captain then? He is a secretive man, and always has been. We should go. Then it's agreed. When you're ready, you'll investigate the mines. Take the hoist to the waterfall, near the outpost you first found me. From there, it is not far to the tunnel. Keep your wits and all your luck about you. An innocent woman, jailed. I mean, as wolf belts go, it's pretty. But I've more than enough of them. It's barbaric. Oak in Boston, an officer sure must be just. Belt. Or else what it all unravels. Helen is right. The truth lies down there, somewhere. I suspect Deborah is at it again. A bear? I could get 40... No, 20 pieces of it is for a bear. You're new. From where have you sprung? Name's Red McRaith. A banisher, come from across the deep blue sea. You look a landlubber to me. You should feel right at home. John Rumble. Are you a married man, John? Aye, to Abigail. I count myself lucky. Are you married yourself, Mr. McCrave? Marriage was not for us. But I suppose you could have called us man and wife. No, you could not. Marriage is a union conceived by men. Men are fallible. Aye. Our feelings exactly. We were happy. Why ruin it and live to regret it? Regret? Oh, I have no regrets. She's a fine woman, my wife. Finer than likes of me deserves. I not say a word against her. Not a word, sir. May you prosper in good health, John. He that does good is of God. How often, Abigail, must we have this fight? How often must we argue? We shall argue until you hear me. I hear you all too well. I hear a hoggish harridan, a narrow nag, a selfish shrew. One of these days, I shall poison your soup. The day before, I'll take you to the highest cliff and push you off it. A store. Fernando's? 
closed. Anyone home? No one. Papers in Miller's name. We're in the right place. Keep looking. What is this? A sansa. It's a musical instrument. It's Bantu, from Southern Africa. He's organized. Disorganized traders lose money. Fonte reads English extensively. Well, nobody's perfect. He's making protective amulets. He's making useless trinkets. And he works hard to keep it away. What is he afraid of? What don't we know? Let's search the store. Spectral traces around his bed. Rebecca, I presume. This may explain the wreath. Surprisingly high quality wares. Can't be many. He left in New Eden. He's doing surprisingly well for himself. Where did he get the inventory? Rebecca's will. She was rich. And she left him the lot. That's where he got the inventory. No. The list matches his sales record. Touch my money and I'll drop you. What are you doing here? Thieving, no doubt. I'm no thief, Mr. Miller. I'm the Banisher. I brought Helen Priest back to the fort. A Banisher? Thieves lie. How do you know my name? It is my business to know. Red McCraith. If you are a banisher of ghosts, I have business for you. I'll pay. Aye. I know about Rebecca. It was she who sent me to find you. She worries for you. Says she loves you. The English have a word for that. Hogshite. Where was she lying? You inherited her estate. Whichever. It matters not. You're a banisher. It is your job to get rid of her. Can you not just do your work? Easy, Mr. Miller. Now, I'll need to examine Rebecca's belongings. I sold them. All of them. You did? To who? I don't know. People. I wrote it down. In the register. Read it, if you wish. Two recent sales to the blacksmith and to Ingersoll's store. You've put quite the effort into protecting your home, haven't you? You poked about my house without my say-so. I know my business. So out of generosity, here's the truth. None of it works. Not the wreath, not the amulet. None of it works. Pretty, though. His brooch is working. It works. She hasn't come back. I can sleep now. Ah, oh, the visits in your sleep. Yes, the visits in my sleep. I hear her calling, whispering my name. I wait to find her at my bedside. Our eyes meet. She stares. She won't leave me alone. She's an Akishi, a demon. Banish her. I'll pay you. I need a job. I accept. Stuff looks good. 
Let's trade. Now, my friend, we are conversing. A storekeeper hears much. What do you hear, Mr. Miller? I'm a busy man. If you've a question to ask, then ask it. What can you tell me about Captain Pennington? He has no problem with me. I have no problem with him. He respected Rebecca's wishes. He gave me what was mine. My freedom. Her estate. He saw me as a man and signed the papers to say so. And when them who saw different complained, he laid down the law. What think you of Helen Priest? I don't think of Helen Priest. I stay out of her way. I hope she'll stay out of mine. How are things in the fort, by your estimation? Look around you. Things are desperate. Have you heard the sound of their bodies crashing against the wood? I am a man of courage. I have endured much. But this... It undoes me. I don't know what you people have done to this country. But there's little hope. And no way out. Farewell to you, Mr. Miller, sir. You know where to find me. If you're buying, I'm selling. He'd sold it all. Everything she'd owned. And fast. Mm, why the hurry? If we track her things down, perhaps they'll tell us. Ferdinando was a slave. She was his owner. A better deal for her than for him. He wants to forget it all and start a new life. But she came back. Pretty. The work, I mean. Not our ghost eye, though. Let's try the forge. Shepherd. Militiaman. Let's try the barrack room. A ghost left a fragment of their past here. Will. Then that's what we're looking for. I sense the vivid echo of a ghost's memory. I only recognize my name in the list. Distant family, but I can't disinherit them. I would never ask you that. 
To have met you is already more than I ever expected. If I was to lose you, God forbid, I cherish all that reminds me of you. There. If you were to lose me, all that I own would now be yours. He claimed not to love her. Why lie? Maybe he did once, and now he doesn't. Let's see what he has to say about it. Banisher? I find papers. Official papers. They tell quite the story. That's all in the past. For the good of my future. But you may as well hear it from me. As she lay dying, Rebecca Hargrave gave me my freedom. Before that, I was her slave. How very romantic. If it weren't for the captain, the good people of New Eden would have let me die too. Rebecca was in love with you. The feeling was not mutual. True? I was her pet. A dog nuzzling its master, hoping she might loosen its leash. She loved me, she said. I allowed her to think I loved her back. I sat up and begged and let her pet me. I was a very good boy. You gulled her, then took advantage. To a slave, a crumb of freedom tastes like a loaf. You'd have done no different. And I do the same again. Enough chitter-chatter. Perhaps you should get back to work. What am I paying you for? You're paying for this. This is the work. But I get the feeling it's the result that interests you, not the method. You want me to finish the job, then the story must be told. The ghost must manifest. I do not like this idea. This idea can shit itself six times by sundown. Come on, break the brooch and let's get it over with. No choice remains. Let it be done and I'll be done with it. Step no closer. I... I don't understand. Are you not glad to see me? Now, Punisher, end this! Not now. You need to hear the truth, both of you. That reminds me. Rebecca, you omitted to tell us that Ferdinando was your slave. That you owned him. I loved him. I was a slave. I was not free to leave you. What kind of love is that? What are you saying? We loved each other. Love? <laughs> no. I told my master what she wanted to hear. I gulled her with a lie. I thought you a fool. But no, you believed me because you wanted to. Yet you didn't believe me, did you? Not entirely. That's why you never freed me. I loved you and you loved me. It was but a piece of paper. A piece of paper and a guarantee. I needed a guarantee. You don't know what love is. You know only fear. You fear being undesired, being unnoticed, being alone. How very human of you, Mistress Hargrave, but hardly an excuse to own a man. The time to give this love story an ending. Ferdinando Miller, the world forced you into a lie. You lived it to the full, and in the end it brought a haunting upon you. You are the tie that holds this ghost here. No! Leave him be! She's a ghost. Get rid of her! Wait. No. No! 
You can't take me. You don't own me. I am a free man. I have done nothing wrong. No. But I have. To hell with it. Your world is no place for men like me. You don't understand. You can't understand. I chose to cheat. You chose to kill. Which of us, Banisher, deserves death? You've saved our sorry asses, sir. Of that, there is no doubt. You've earned us a rare bit of rest, and that comes most welcome. You're right, soldier. You look drop dead weary. The dead don't sleep, do they? And me being asleep won't stop them coming. Can no one take your shift? We're short handed as it is. Sides. I can rest and keep watch at the same time. Old soldier trick. Let's cut to it. I think you're haunted. The good news is that I can help. <laughs> the Banisher thinks I'm haunted, does he? Nah, I ain't important enough to be haunted. I ain't important, and I don't deserve no help. Waste of time helping me anyway. You heard the man. He wants no help. I see no reason to force it on him. For now, at least. Our folk doing? Fighting fit? Well, they're farmers, most of them. Shopkeepers, house servants, hunters. We've one old soldier, but he's sick. Them who stand, stand dead on their feet. Fighting fit, my arse. But we hold against the hordes of the dead. For now, leastways. The fight's not fair, does it? That's wrong. But we're doing our best to put it right. Wherefore, the paradise of New Eden, eh? What a hole we've made of it. Mind you, if we stop digging, we die. Had any good scuttle lately? I'll spill it if I have it, but be quick. I'm busy. We've known an officer or three, you and me. So, tell me about the captain. 
In nigh on 20 years' service, I've not met a commander more efficient. Nor one so relentless. Ever a pain in the ass, aye. But a good one. But that was then and this is now. He's not the man he was. Still a pain in the arse, mind. What think you now of Helen Priest? Well, she's like her husband. Only yet better. Command is in her blood. She reminds me of my old mum. The Queen of Topsfield Common, we used to call her. Born to give orders, she was. And you dare not disobey. Did you know Sebastian Priest? I surely did. Good man. Hell of a soldier. Had kingly ideals, but did not strut like a crow in the gutter. Hero is an ill-used tag, oft misassigned. But Lieutenant Priest was a hero, and a proper one at that. Peaceful watch to you. I'd like to help him. Old soldier and all. All right. Let's start with his billet. Right. Andrew's things. Where are you? Hmm, a ward. Given to a brave soldier. I believe we found Andrew's things. This is our best lead yet. I wonder if there's an infirmary. After that, we might look for his train band record. Pretty empty armory. Looks like someone's been living in here. Storeroom. Locked.
Now, Mr. Peabody, I shall drain the first boil. Ready? Same sudden question every sudden time. No, I'm not dumb well ready. Excellent. Then we'll begin. Be careful, God darn it! Careful! Gah! I know. I know. Shh. Are those your records? Yes. Perhaps someday they may help someone. Thirteen years is a long time to live haunted. White must have a will of iron. Kept it to himself. I must have been hellish. Any idea who this ghost might be? We may know a soldier by his trail of dead. Could be anyone. Who oh, there are you? Queen Mary Stuart? Well, I've met Mary the Second, and she's a little prettier than I. I'm Red McCraith. I'm a banisher. <sighs> the banisher come to gloat at sick old cotton peabody. Well, piss off. There's a sudden stink of death in here, Scotsman, and it ain't from me. Where did you fight, soldier? None of your business, Scotsman. This comrade is why no one wants to talk to you. <laughs> you know, soldier, you're a brawler and a rebel, and if you fought at all, I'll wager you lost. I'm a proper soldier, me. Self-made, too. Left the family farm and signed up to fight them Indians. I learned the hard way, in the blood and the snow. Fought under the captain himself, I did. Then followed him here and joined the train band. When did you get sick? What's it to you? I'm not so sick as I can't give some nosy Scotsman what for. <laughs> when I'm sick, I get surly too. What's the word around here? No one tattles to me, stuck in here. Captain came by once, worried for Andrew White. Seems the old boy screams in his sleep. There's a lot of it about. White's a gate guard, right? What's his story? He sees ghosts in his sleep. He's dreaming. Real ghosts come when you're awake. As you were, Mr. Peabody. See about. Not like I can go anywhere anyways. Enough, John. I'll not listen to another moment of your ranting. Tis no rant, woman. Bennington's backbone is gone, and we're all suffering. The captains of war here have respect. Respect? Helen Priest sets out into the wilds in search of our salvation, while Captain rots in his office. Now I know who to respect. What do you do, John? Dig latrines? How much respect does that get you, eh? Go to hell. Take your captain with you.
a metal trinket to mark a life of sacrifice. Oh, I bet he'd rather have his sleep back. At least he made it home. Aye. Then he didn't. I'll talk to Andrew. Might perk him up a bit. Should have had your breakfast, friend. Anyway, greetings. I'm Antea Duarte. This here is Red McWraith. We're banishers. Now, who are you and what do you want? <laughs> are you the ghost haunting Andrew White? Is that a yes or a no? You chose to manifest. Why is that? Are you looking for help? Who are you? This isn't going to be easy, is it? Ugh, mute ghosts take forever. This is pointless. We're hunting in the dark with no light and no spur. First, you have to find out what's keeping him from speaking. Andrew won't be much help. But if our friend here can't tell us what he wants, maybe he can show us. <sighs> Do you want us to follow you? I think he wants us to follow him. He left stains. Clever. I'll keep an eye out so we don't lose them. Here, we can go on. I'm reminded of one of my first cases. The ghost was mute because the person haunted refused to talk. So this one is mute because of Andrew? I don't know. Maybe. More stains. On we go. This way. The ghost haunting Andrew seems weak. Drawing out the torture the better to enjoy it? Or holding itself back, afraid to feed too much? If mine had been so kind, maybe to slept nights. I'm jealous. Don't be. 
These ones are the worst. Years withering, decades even. It's an awful way to go. Our friend the ghost could have shown us a safer route. Or he's just playing with us. He wants us to follow him. Over here. The stain is fading. Make a run for it! This spectral nest needs to be cleansed. Wait, the stain is fading. Spectral writing on the wall. See for yourself. Joshua Gouge, gone too soon. What's it going to say? Joshua Gouge, outstayed his welcome. So Joshua is not here for revenge. He's leading. Over here. Joshua looks kindly on Andrew. What were they to each other? Could be an enemy. There's fraternity across the lines, too. Weren't you haunted by the men you killed? Aye. <laughs> they weren't friendly. And who could blame them? Maybe our new friend Andrew will tell us all about it. Most young men are taught to dream of war. Our new friend is waiting for us. Yeah. I have another in sight. Head 
heads up! Can I join in too? The stain is fading. call for a ritual and a lot of caution. I summon you now! Still confusing your chance? Spirit and flesh, I summon you! Another in sight. Did we miss a few? to me. Voices from the past. Shite! Two arms! Two arms! They waylay us! The right flank! Hold them off! Josh! Behind you! Good jump! Bustardly cold! Help me! Mm. 
Nice to meet you again, Joshua. You want us to help Andrew White give up his guilt and get on with his life. Am I right? <sighs> we know you died fighting by his side. Is that why he feels guilty? Is this why you can't speak? I'll do whatever it takes to end the haunting. We'll do our jobs. Only these two could talk to each other. Andrew needs to start talking. As long as he swallows his guilt, nothing will change. There's a wall between these two, and we must knock it down. I may be able to do that. Andrew failed to save his friend and blames himself for it. Guilt is normal, but you must let it go. I had claw marks on it. None of this explains what binds the ghost here. Good to see you living, sir. Keep it short, I'm on duty. You're not like this, but we must speak of Joshua. Where did you get that name? From his ghost. It's important we talk about him. Joshua requests it himself. He wants to take revenge. I know it. You're no wrong. He wants to give you freedom. He never blamed you. You blamed yourself. Why would he not seek revenge? He's due it. He doesn't see it that way. I... I shot him. I was trying to save him and I shot him. Hold on. How did this happen? We were skirmishing in the forest. Two Indian fellas bore down on Joshua. Dropped one, but the other had him cold. I was twenty yards away. I raised my musket, pulled the trigger. Bullet went straight through his skull. Did you admit it later? I mean, no one would have thought the worst of you. A battle like that, well, it's what happens. Shite happens to shite soldiers. I said nothing. I wanted it over. I want it over. I don't want to live. I want to die. Please. Please. Put me out of my misery. What is it with you people wanting to die? Deadly serious now. You sure this is what you want? There's no doubt. I'm certain. I can take it no more and do not want to. No. You survived. Now you must live. Just as you could not speak, Joshua, I don't think he can hear you. Sorry about this, Andrew. I wish it could have gone better for you. The war left me 
Injured. The wounds were invisible, but mortal just the same. Oh shit! They were not mortal! You live! Andrew, listen to me! Listen, listen, listen to me! Why don't you answer? I told you, he won't hear it. He's made his choice. Now we make ours. Andrew White. You faced death, soldier. More than once. You and he have shaken hands and he has tricked you. Yet rarely have I met a man so determined to walk into death's embrace. I, Banisher, I have seen too many dead. Just one. And then no more. No. No. He must live. I'll help him. The dead can't help the living. Not in the end. So says the Lady Ghost! I'm tired. Time to sleep. Damn you, Punishers! Pointless. <laughs> 